Go away. I don't want to see you. The doctor told me to sleep. I rarely get to interrogate a suspect with his guard down in a place as quiet as this. Getting the chance to study his body language with no distractions is a rare gift. His heart rate is increasing. It could mean that he's lying, but it could also just be pure, unadulterated rage. He's clenching his fist, a sign of contained anger. He's looking straight at me. If he couldn't hold my stare, I'd think he's lying. But that's not the case. Clenched fist. Fast heart rate. Fixed stare. He feels some genuine rage towards me. I'm sorry you don't want to see me, but... I saved your life, son. Maybe my aunt feels gratitude. I certainly don't. Luckily, I just got my medication. I'll be snoozing soon. All right. I'll just cut to the chase. Who killed Joe Dunn? What? Are you trying to confuse me? Joe hanged himself. Dunn was too short to hang himself with that rope. So... It's true? He was murdered? I know the murder weapon was yours. What? The rope? I don't get it. What weapon do you mean? Don't play with me, boy. The chest expander. An expander? I've never had one of those. All right. Let's just say that I... I believe you. The murderer killed Dunn with a chest expander and planted evidence to make us believe it was suicide. But he also left enough clues behind to make sure we found the true murder weapon. Then he put the chest expander box in your locker to frame you. Do you know anyone that twisted and who also happens to have a mo- I, I don't know. What about Sonia Dunn? Sonia? I doubt it. She's odd, but she's his daughter. I've seen worse, believe me. Maybe it was... What am I saying? Jake could never pull off something like that. <laughs> Nothing. Never mind. Desmond O'Leary certainly seems twisted enough. Did he have anything against Dunn? I'm not sure if they knew each other. At least not in person. About a month ago, Joe kicked one of O'Leary's men out of the gym. He was trying to give a business card to... Jake was the army. Yeah, exactly. Did Jake tell you about that? Something like that. What about Frank Cassidy? Do you think he has a motive? Maybe. A few weeks ago, Joe took me to a boxing manager's association meeting. Headed by Cassidy. Yeah. He was obsessed with making it illegal for boxers to fight without a manager. Or without an associated manager. Everyone seemed to go along with it until Joe spoke up. He said that would lower us to mob status. That Cassidy had founded the association just to make money by monopolizing the sport. That made others think twice. And Cassidy ended up empty-handed. Poor Cassidy. Black Sad. I think I owe you an, um... Uh... You know, my father disappeared when I was six. Right after winning a fight. We never heard from him again. Do you know what that does to a kid? Who knows where I'd be if Joe Dunn hadn't been in my life. Even when I lost my way and put a gun to his head years later. He still took me under his wing and managed to steer me in the right direction. And now that he's gone, 
you're risking your life to find his murderer. Thanks. Thank you for... The number of cigarette butts is inversely proportional to my hours of sleep. Ah, damn. Is that eye movement normal? The hands say a lot about what's going on inside a person. He seems restless. Should I tell someone? See, there's no fever whatsoever. He must be having a nightmare. Are you sure? Wouldn't you have nightmares too after what he went through yesterday? I know I sure wouldn't sleep. I have nightmares myself, but those go way back. Oh, the poor thing. Do you know what my nightmare is? It's that, that witch I have to work with. Oh. Good thing she's got trauma surgery at 12.30, but I wish it were a little sooner, you know? Anyway, thank you for letting me know and, and for bringing him in. You don't know how excited I am to be involved in a criminal case. It might not be important, but I need to take a look at his medical report. Something's wrong with him. I need to find out what. Hi. You're awake, handsome? They ran several tests on Bobby Yale last night after admitting him. Have the results come in yet? Hmm. No. I don't think so, handsome.
Hmm. I'll take a pack of Morley's, please. Honey, get me a pack of Morley's for Mr. Hanson. be able to read Yale's medical report if she's around. Come on, you've got Yale's report on the table. I can see it. That's that. What if you show me Yale's report and I buy you dinner? You're handsome, all right. But I'm not stupid. I won't be able to read Yale's medical report if she's around. I won't be able to read Yale's medical report if she's around. Seems like the Doe nurse will be assisting Dr. Talbot during his 12.30 surgery. In four hours. Could I get them to operate any sooner? Footprints don't match. If Yale killed Dunn, he did it without stepping in the paint or in different shoes.
I won't be able to read Yale's medical report if she's around. Get Dr. Gregor Talbot, please. Yes, one minute. Um, no, actually, Dr. Talbot won't be in until 12.30, according to my registry. Can I ask who's calling, please? Sherry, this is Dr. Talbot. We have to reschedule the 12.30 procedure. I want everyone in the operating room in five minutes. If anyone gives you any grief, tell them it's a matter of life or death. Understood? A matter of life and death, a matter of life and death. You've got to be kidding me. All right, now, how do I put this? I need something that you have. Oh, only if you guess why I'm giving it to you. You want to help me solve a criminal investigation. Well, aren't you smart? But be quick about it. You hear me, huh? If that witch comes back... What? What does it say here? Ah, you know doctors. The top handwriting is mine. Let's see. Extra systole and dehydration caused by panic attack. Extra what? You know, arrhythmia, like skipped heartbeats. What about this here? It's a good thing I know that Mr. Yale is in Dr. Ferguson's hands. Otherwise, I'd be worried. Hey. No means no, miss. You really don't know who I am, do you? Miss, I've got orders. And the fact is, those orders say that... There you are, Miss Dunn. Huh? Tell him, Black Sad. I can't get through that thick skull of his. You see, hi, Phil. She's the owner of Yale's gym. A woman? Whether the kid recovers or not depends entirely on her. Between you and me, and all due respect, miss, but aren't we taking this woman's liberation a little too far? All right, let her in, but she's your responsibility. Thanks for convincing the cop. You hired me to find Yale. I wanted you to see him with your own eyes. I see. Anyway, you did your job. I'll send you a check the day after the fight. You can leave now. She's gonna do something stupid. Sonia, don't. He killed my father. You said so yourself. No, I told you I wasn't sure. He almost killed you in that floozy's apartment. How could he not be guilty?
You can't take justice into your own hands. Believe me, it will haunt you as long as you live. Shut up! None of that matters! How could he not be guilty? Your father wouldn't want you to do this. He was a just man, and this is not justice. It's okay. It's okay. <clears throat> Uncle Tim! Sweetie, I came back from Los Angeles as soon as I could. I told you not to rush back. Come on now, honey. Aren't you going to introduce me to your friend? No, this is John Blacksad, the detective who found Bobby. Oh, so this is strictly professional. I thought you had some good news for your uncle. No, Uncle Tim, don't be silly. Don't be silly? Look at you, smart. Educated, as dazzling as the brightest of stars. Every single man in this city should be at your feet. Come on, we'd better let him rest. Hmm. I see. Let's say you're right and Bobby Yale is innocent. Who should we focus on now? We? Well, your father turned down my money, but he made me promise one thing, that I'd take care of you if anything happened to him. But I can... I know you're perfectly capable of managing that gym on your own, but we don't even know if he'll be ready to fight Stone. Besides, someone seems really invested in stopping that fight. And someone has to pay Mr. Blacksad to get to the bottom of all this. Please, talk some sense into her. I don't need more money. Yeah, you hired me to find Yale, but in my mind, the case isn't closed. And you have my deepest respect, but I'll pay you just the same. All right. Thank you, Uncle. Thank you so much. All right. Stop crying or you'll ruin your makeup, honey. Now fix yourself up and I'll buy you some breakfast. Uh, wait. My purse. I'll get it. It must be... Black said, wait a minute. I think she needs some time alone. Just like you and me. Listen, boy. Do whatever it takes to find Joe's murder. Whatever it takes. If things get messy, don't worry. I'll clean them up. Deal? Sure. I'll do my best. Thank you. I trust you to get that ball to the end zone. No. Are you telling stories about the great iron arm again? Wait a minute. Of course. The milestone's quarterback. Tim Iron Arm <laughs> Thorpe. <laughs> it's a good thing folks usually recognize me sooner. Black said, you coming to breakfast? I'd love to. But I have to go ask for a favor. Jake wasn't at home, or at his usual bar. But on the third try, I found him.
That lizard isn't Yale's doctor. Hey, hi. Hey, focus, will you? How many hits does a boxer take to the head throughout his career? This one's got extra padding, just like Jake. Hey, Jake. Not now, John. Not the smartest cookie in the jar, nor the most tactful, but do I trust him? No. Do I consider him a friend? Yes. He's been training with those same shorts for who knows how long. I hope he never feels inclined to hit me. He's twice my size. Hey, Jake. I said not now. Hey, Jake. Damn it! Wait a minute. All right, that's enough. Hmm. Take five. Go on. What, John? What's so important?
Have you noticed anything strange about Sonya? I don't know. Yesterday she said she hated the gym. But it also seemed like she wanted to save the place. Do you get any of this? I sure don't. It might not have seemed that way, but she loved her dad. Believe me, I've got reasons to be certain. Could you tell me where Old Erie's headquarters are? Uh, what for? No, no, no. You could get me into trouble. No way. You lied to me yesterday. And being the good friend that I am, I kept your secret. You owe me. I don't think I'd keep protecting you if we weren't friends. Although, if we were friends, you wouldn't hesitate to help me. Tell me, Jake. Are we friends or not? Damned cat. All right. <sighs> O'Leary's hideout is in the basement of a Chinese restaurant. But I don't even know how to get in. Why are you coaching that guy? Oh, that's right. You don't know. Sonya asked me to run the gym. Well, at least the fun part. As soon as Bobby yells back on his feet, I'll turn him into a champ. I'll make him crush stone. Just you wait. What? Why are you looking at me like that? Couldn't you just stop working for O'Leary? Yeah, I guess I could. Well, I'll see you tonight. See you there. Ronald! The break's over. After 30 hours of work and several beatings, every bone in my body ached for a bed. Now it's my turn. So I went home to recharge. <clears throat> because the night ahead was bound to be promising. What do you know about that basement? Well, let me think. Nothing? Come on, Jake, for Christ's sake. I'm running out of threats to get you talking, Jake. And frankly, I don't want things to get violent. I've come to get O'Leary several times, but they always make me wait in the dining room. One day it was so late that the restaurant was closed. They made me call from a payphone in that alley over there to let them know I was here. A few minutes later, O'Leary came out the back door. That red one there. All right, you stay by the payphone. Wait till I'm inside. If you see anyone, call the same number you did that one time. Got it? Screw you. A promising night indeed.
Could it be an elevator shaft? How does this thing open? What happened? Should we run for it? Do I look like I'm in a hurry? Check out that graffiti. You're in On Leon Tong territory. Wow. I thought the Tong Wars had ended years ago. Maybe someone nostalgic just got bored. Damn Chinese mafias. Yeah. American mafias are infinitely better, no doubt. Are you done? What do you think? There's a trap door on the ground, right by the restaurant. Does that sound familiar? Huh? The... The restaurant or the trap door? Okay. Forget it. What's taking you so long? You want to switch places? The carpet store neon sign is still on, even though no one walks down that alley. Don't you find that odd? They must have forgotten to turn it off. Plus, they're not short on cash. I heard O'Leary say he was going to buy 10 carpets the other day. Okay, I'm going back to the alley. I'll let you know if I need anything. if O'Leary doesn't know I've been here. Would he even notice if I got in? <laughs> Stupid pig. Does he need a shotgun to deal with suppliers? I'm guessing it lights up when they ring at the main door. <laughs> Stupid coyote! Something tells me he'd notice me no matter how stealthy I was. <laughs> Stupid coyote! Maybe it leads to the basement. <laughs> If only I could reach that box. There's a guy watching TV inside the restaurant. A red panda, I think. Doesn't ring a bell. I don't recall any panda waiters. From the back door, I can see a hall that might lead to the basement. Does that sound familiar? O'Leary sometimes comes from a hallway. But who knows if it's that one? 
need your brute force, Jake. Uh, what's wrong? Is the little kitten too, uh... And your silence. ourselves when it's far too late. Oh, no, 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 not now! Some answers only come to you when it's far too late. <gasps> Who's there? I was expecting some frozen bodies. Hmm. <clears throat> <clears throat> <clears throat> <clears throat> <clears throat> <clears throat> 
Pegue um pad. Does O'Leary have a network of pals? This one. The odds are incredibly in Stone's favor. I guess that he's the reigning champion, and Bobby Yale is just a contender, but maybe word got out about his condition. you could place so many bets on a single baseball game. like a summary of all the bets that come in. Day, amount, bet, wagerer. Wait a minute, did O'Leary himself bet five grand on Yale? Sixteen days until the fight. Sometimes I forget that criminals, even the office variety, have family and kids. Anyway, maybe things aren't so bad on the dark side. A little thingamajig that adds on its own. What'll they think of next? Hmm.
Could that be Ireland? I'd say that's Ireland too. concealed file after file of celebrity reports with all sorts of shady information, ranging from S to Z. Almost all of them were athletes. Is that what O'Leary meant when he said that detectives and police officers were his friends? I wonder how many spy for him. If I were to pitch in, who would I spy on? Thorpe had been a rising football star before the war, which he came back from with honors and decorations. After the truce, he resumed his career. He won three season trophies and a couple of MVP awards. He retired after an accident that left him paralyzed from the waist down. He started his own sports advertising agency four years ago, but according to the files, O'Leary hadn't even tried to corrupt him. Bobby Dale's folder, all I found was a log of his incredible stats as an aspiring champion. 20 victories, 16 by knockout. Although, at the end of the report, someone had underlined one word several times. Untouchable. According to Stone's report, he was so clean, not to mention hard to corrupt, that O'Leary opted for a more subtle strategy. Apparently, when he broke up with the tennis player Helen Moore, he set her up with Stone. Lucky for him, they hit it off. As I put away the report, I stopped in my tracks. Did I really want to risk knowing what O'Leary had on my good friend? the incorruptible police commissioner? To be honest, if Smirnov had anything to hide, I'd rather not know about it. Limited edition copy two of three. We listen, if you call it listening, to the sentimental romance. Your eyes act like the moon. If they're not together anymore, why does O'Leary keep so many pictures of romantic moments with Helen Moore?
Luckily or not, files in through R included no one that I could somehow connect to the case. Dunn's integrity was legendary, even in O'Leary's shady reports, just like Yale had said. Dunn had kicked one of O'Leary's men out of the gym when he found him snooping around. Cassidy's report was possibly the longest among all of O'Leary's files. Apparently, their rivalry went way back. So much so that they spied on each other in the most unthinkable ways. At least I was able to confirm what Yale had told me. Cassidy had threatened Dunn after he refused to join the manager's union. The report on Yale's father was the shortest of all, since only his name was left. Why? A Crossler? The good news is, I don't need lockpicks to open it. The bad news, I didn't bring explosives. Even Dunn had a gun in his office. O'Leary couldn't possibly be the exception. Dunn had $200 in his safe. O'Leary had about 20000 in a drawer. Strange as it may seem, the reports reveal that O'Leary had hired Jake as a bodyguard precisely because he was absolutely clean. Apparently, he liked to surround himself with honest people when he mingled with the high society. Helen Moore's file was, by far, one of the juiciest. She had been just a run-of-the-mill tennis player until O'Leary launched her career by rigging enough games to help her climb the ranking. However, O'Leary hadn't fixed any of her games in over a year. In spite of that, she remained undefeated. Be as it may, it was clear that O'Leary had enough information to ruin her career.
Jake. Someone was coming. Are we or are we not exemplary workers, Jim? Here it is, middle of the night. Jake. Someone was coming. Are we or are we not exemplary workers, Jimmy? Here it is, middle of the night. And we're working extra hours. Hey, Jimmy, what do you think about that? I think he's scared stiff, Desmond. <laughs> Why's that, Jimmy? We're giving you the red carpet treatment. We even let you in the boss's office. You're one lucky fellow. <laughs> you can't say I don't treat you well, Jimmy. <laughs> Yeah. Speak, you moron. Yeah, yeah, uh, very well. Uh, why are you... Shh. C calm down. How long have you worked for me, Jimmy? Three, 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 three months. Three months. Oh, yeah. I hired you right after your cousin Martin died. <laughs> I need your opinion. How would you punish someone for ruining an innocent man's life with a hit and run, Jimmy? I, I don't know. And tell me, what about you, Wilson? What would you do? <laughs> no, please, please, please. I didn't do anything, I swear. He was a good guy. <laughs> of course, you already knew that. You knew him better than me, right? <laughs> He was my cousin! I... That's why I hired you, Jimmy. You see, Martin was a dear friend. And his widow said you were a nice kid. That you'd do a good job. And you needed the money. And I... I have a soft spot for those in need. Please. But, uh... You know what? I talked to her just yesterday. She told us you did some naughty things to her with that gun, Jimmy. No, no, no. That's no way to treat a widow, is it? <laughs> She's lying. Why would I do that? Leave him alone, O'Leary. No one deserves to die. Not even... Uh -uh. <laughs> Looks like you do. He was a good guy. <laughs> of course, you already knew that. You knew him better than me, right? <laughs> he was my cousin. I. That's why I hired you, Jimmy. You see, Martin was a dear friend. And his widow said you were a nice kid. That you'd do a good job and you needed the money. And I... I have a soft spot for those in need. Please. But, uh... You know what? I talked to her just yesterday. She told us you did some naughty things to her with that gun, Jimmy. No, no, no. That's no way to treat a widow, is it? <laughs> <laughs> She's lying! Why would I do that? 
What about the kid? <laughs> Are you so sure you know how long a kid can hold his breath? With his little head inside a toilet bowl? <laughs> Son of a bitch. <laughs> I didn't want to. It was his idea. <laughs> Selfishly, I was glad I hadn't risked my life to save Jimmy. Maybe not even someone like him deserves to die. But one could also argue that I didn't deserve to die for someone like him. Who's your boss? Give me a name! Cassidy, it was his idea. He said you'd hired me if I'd managed to scare the widow, and I just... All right, all right. What? Just calm down now. It's gonna be okay. There are two sacred principles that rule my life. The first principle is the love for my family. I do anything to protect them. The second principle. I never put my future in the hands of fate. I always play it nice and safe. And I would even add a third principle. Or, better yet, a rule. If anything threatens either of these two crucial principles, I take matters into my own hands. You see where this is going? For the first time, I got someone killed. Even though all I really did was rat him out. No, 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 I just... Stop I, interrupting I, me, Jimmy! No. It's not polite! Sorry. We're all the same. So rude! You know what? Let's leave it at that. You're going to give a message to that disgusting walrus Cassidy, aren't you? Yeah, 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 sure. Whatever you say. Yeah, sure, 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 sure. Good boy. What? 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 What's the message? Oh, Jimmy, Jimmy, Jimmy. You still don't get it, do you? You are the message. Huh? Huh? <laughs> Come on. Wrap him up. Make sure Cassidy gets the message for breakfast, will you? I hope he chokes on it. Got it. Hmm, where are you hiding, little fishy? Once again, you didn't get to hear the end of my story. What? Just where do you think you're going, putty kiss? <laughs>